Hello there, this is Amy, and today I'm going to talk to you about cyanotypes. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine that was asking me questions about it, and it occurred to me that maybe some people don't realize um, how flexible the technique is, so I thought I would make a little video and talk about one of the things that you can do with it. Um, a lot of people use cyanotypes to make photograms maybe of like solid objects like botanicals and things like that um, but you can also um, do things like this what you see here which is um, like draw onto something and turn it into kind of like a negative to make a cyanotype with so the materials that I have here things that you would need um, would be um, this king size sharpie which I personally find to be um, pretty good in terms of making a really solid line once upon a time my daughter had a sun print kit and it came with some sort of a wax pencil um, I don't know where that wax pencil is and I don't have one so I'm gonna say sharpie you could use any kind of a sharpie you just might need to go over it several times to make a good solid line. I used this king size Sharpie um, to make this just a few minutes ago. Um, I have some cyan a piece of traded cyanotype paper, which you could see here. There it is, just uh, the raw materials, which I coated myself on this Fabriano. Oh my goodness, you can't see it. I'm sorry, I'm gonna move the video. Um, hot press watercolor paper. I will, uh, I think it's worth noting that this is not actually my favorite watercolor paper to make cyanotypes with. I personally prefer the cold press, which has more texture to it. Um, but this paper I already had coated, so this is the paper I'm using today. I also have some of this Duralar, which you can get from Amazon. It comes very handily layered with pieces of tissue paper in between and um, the kind of art making that I do, I don't let anything go to waste. So I actually really like that it comes with tissue paper. For the sake of experimentation, I have a little square of Duralar and then square is approximately the same size of printer paper, wax paper, and a piece of the tissue paper that came in the Duralar. And I'm going to just use my um, king size Sharpie to draw approximately the same thing. And I am not really a pro at drawing, so I'm just gonna draw a flower. Uh, by the way, this Sharpie on the Duralar makes a very satisfying squeaking sound if you are um, writing a lot of stuff. We will make a flower. And here's a flower. You notice that I'm doing it on top. I'm drawing this on top of a cardboard because I don't really want to leave a permanent marker mark of my lovely flower on my, um, see, there it is, on my kitchen counter. Never mind that it has silver nitrate strain, stains on it from other experiments. So I have four flowers on the Duralar, the wax paper, the tissue paper, and the printer paper. Now, the other things that you will need if you are going to make a cyanotype are a base to put the cyanotype paper on and a piece of glass or plastic, something like that, plexiglass. This I think is, I don't actually know where I got it, but it's, um, it's plastic. Um, I've had experiences breaking the glass. And this is a clip frame, which I dismantled in order to make a contact printing frame with it. You will also possibly, especially if it's windy, it's a good idea to use some sort of a clip to hold it together. Here are some very sophisticated chip clips from my local grocery store. Um, you really don't have to have anything fancy to do this sort of thing. Once you are done, you will also need water. I'm going to use my kitchen sink. And you would probably like to have some hydrogen peroxide, which is super cheap at the grocery store. Again, it just helps with the developmental development process. It kind of uh, speeds it up. So I'm going to take my piece of cyanotype paper and I'm going to put my little flowers on here. 
Hopefully all four of them fit. I might not have thought this through perfectly before I started. All right, there we go. And I am going to cover it. And I'm gonna clip it. It is kind of windy. And there's nothing so disheartening to me as um, watching the wind get under the glass and blow around whatever I spent ages carefully um, carefully arranging inside. Now it is a fairly sunny day. We've got sun and clouds with this sort of, with, if I was doing a solid object on here, I would expose it for seven minutes on paper with, um, fabric. I would expose it for 10 minutes, but since this sort of thing with this one, I did for four minutes because the sun will penetrate the ink and it will become overexposed and kind of disappear quite quickly. Speaking of disappearing, the sun just went away. So we're gonna continue this in a few minutes. And the sun is back out. So from my ultra sophisticated kitchen studio to my ultra sophisticated, probably not very tidy backyard studio, out goes the cyanotype into the sun. And I'm going to leave it there for four minutes. I'm gonna set a timer. Okay, and we are at the four minute mark. Uh, you might observe how the paper has changed. I'm going to take this inside and we are going to take it apart and wash it. So you can see here how obviously the Duralar acetate didn't leave any mark. The plain printer paper left a square. The wax paper uh, didn't really leave much of a trace. And the tissue paper little left a little bit of a trace. So I'm just going to take this, turn on the water and rinse it. And um, cyanotypes are made with all natural salts. It's absolutely fine to wash this down the sink. Nothing dangerous about it. It's also okay. If you make these, the riverbank, on the, at the ocean, you can wash it there in fresh water in a hurricane thing. So you can see how this is changing already. What I'm going to do now is wash the sink so that it can soak a little bit. Now, I am using, like I said, I am using watercolor paper that I coated myself. And um, I am basing the time off of my own experience with exposing watercolor papers and cyanot with cyanotype. I am also able to soak this for a lot longer than some cyanotype papers because it is watercolor paper and it can take a lot of, you know, it, it, it can soak, which is one of the reasons I like using watercolor paper. Some cyanotype papers you cannot do this with because it is a thinner, just like kind of regular sort of paper. So pay really close attention when you are making cyanotypes on paper to the instructions that it came with, unless of course you're coating it yourself and then it's trial and error and you'll probably figure it out. Um, but you can see what happened here um, with the different, with the different materials, you can see that a dark line on a piece of white paper will actually make a cyanotype print. However, in comes hydrogen peroxide. This might change things. I'm just gonna arbitrarily squirt some in there and kind of shush it around. Probably, if you've never made cyanotypes, you can probably tell that it's not the most exacting process. It's pretty forgiving. Okay, so we have and obviously I will let this soak more, but you can see here's the results of Sharpie on Duralar, which is basically like plastic. Sharpie on plain white printer paper, Sharpie on wax paper, Sharpie on tissue paper. And you can kind of see like the texture of the tissue paper, which is interesting. So I'm going to let this um, continue 
to soak a little bit to get all the chemistry out of it, which is what I need to do with this kind of paper. You know, it really soaks up the chemistry when I put it in there. And then I'm gonna let it dry. I hope that this illustrates for you how, if you are the sort of person that can draw things, unlike me, and you wanted to draw something and be able to make a bunch of cyanotype prints with it or possibly layer it into other sorts of cyanotype prints, if you wanted to write something, the potential with this technique is just, it, it really, you could do just about anything with it. It's only limited by your own ideas and your own creativity. So I, if you experiment with this, honestly, I would love to know, send me a message. Um, I hope that you found this useful. Have a great day.